I would like to thank uh, everyone for the invitation to come and address you today. It's all still a wee bit daunting for me, having been just in the job for about a month. Um, but I can assure you that um, if I do nothing else, I would like to do some good. Um, and it is in the spirit of partnership and collaboration and cooperation that I intend to sort of like execute my duties as the minister um, and with the enthusiasm that is here and the buzz of the conversations, I think I'm in good company. I'm very grateful for the chance to hear from uh, this key industry, especially because I'm aware that it has an impact across portfolios. And I'll certainly be taking that message back to all my colleagues because actually it touches upon everybody and all their portfolios. And again, by working together, we can make sure that we can move forward. I'm also looking forward to listening to the panel and what they have to say and take that learning away with me. We all recognise the multiple benefits from events and what the events sector through multiple partnerships and organisations does for Scotland on so many issues and areas. That's why the national events, uh, national strategy for economic transformation, NSET, uh, already recognises that creative industries, major events and tourism are among a range of current and future key industries where Scotland already occupies a position of global leadership. Events, first of all, are a flexible tool to attract visitors to specific locations and then they act as a catalyst for them to move around Scotland. That makes our event sector a precious asset for generating and spreading economic benefit throughout Scotland. When a thriving event sector, communities and visitors throughout Scotland can experience accessible and inclusive events with a wide geographical and seasonal diversity of events, spreading their multiple benefits across the country and where funders invest in events, we can see a return in visitor spend relatively quickly, often in about a year. The swifter economic benefit provides a valuable balance within our longer term economic development programme. So as well as that economic impact, events of all sizes and locations bring us together to celebrate our culture, heritage and place, to share ideas, to connect with people and communities and to enhance our personal well-being. And that last one I think is over, often overlooked. We know events can also provide volunteering opportunities and help promote well-being and social connectedness. And the most recent examples are you know, including the 2023 uh, UCI Cycling World Championships and the World Athletics Indoor Championships at the beginning of March. Uh, and no, I'm not completely biased towards Glasgow. I'm taking care of the whole of Scotland. Events can provide career paths, especially for young people starting out for those considering job changes. Events also help support the right to access to participate in and enjoy culture, cultural heritage and cultural expressions. In doing these things, the events sector drives Scotland's visitor economy, supports Scotland's international engagement, enhances our global profile and contributes to our individual well-being and community cohesion. Ensuring a thriving event sector, the sector delivers across so many of our shared ambitions. And that's why the Scottish Government will continue to work with you to ensure a thriving sector can deliver our shared objectives. It's very clear that we are collectively facing challenges. Public finances are under unprecedented pressure. Household incomes are being squeezed and the sponsorship market is challenging. We have unacceptable levels of inequality in our society and must address global challenges such as the climate emergency. 
So it's ever more vital that we work together to address the wider challenges that we all face. We're already working with the events sector to embed fair work principles in the public sector grants and support the development of a skilled workforce. With our collective action, developing fair work and pathways in the sector, we can help to tackle child poverty and ensure that equality, diversity and inclusion continue to be at the heart of everything that we do. With the right guidance and infrastructure, events can also continue to reduce their own emissions and help deliver wider behavioural changes in audiences and artists to help us all tackle the climate crisis. And I'm confident that working together, we will achieve the ultimate benefits of this work. We have done it before. Collectively, we have shown great capacity to innovate and collaborate in the most difficult of times of COVID, recovery and the cost of living crisis, providing the platform for recovery. The events sector has always shown that it is innovative, resilient and forward-looking sector, capable of pivoting to meet these new challenges and make the most of emerging priorities in the global market. In times of challenge, it's even more important that we have a clear plan with a clear vision. And that's why since last summer, the events sector has been helping develop the refresh of the national event strategy. Scotland, the perfect stage. The events sector working alongside trade unions, local authorities and the wider public sector. The refresh strategy will be launched this spring. It will provide a focus for the whole event sector, bringing everyone together to deliver a relevant, refreshed and shared ambition. The refresh strategy is intended to sustain, support and develop a dynamic, responsible and resilient event sector to ensure that Scotland continues to be the perfect stage for events. It's an ambition to build on, on what we've already achieved collectively in the past 20 years. It means we need to work together in the journey towards 2035 to develop events, develop the industry and develop Scotland. That means we need to ensure that we have inclusive events with a coherent approach to investment, support and geographic diversity with a portfolio of events ranging from community to mega events. Crucially, we also need to be clear on how we will measure the impacts across that range of events. We'll also need to attract, retain and develop a diverse talent pool to ensure quality events across Scotland with a great infrastructure and services. The refresh strategy treasures events as an asset for Scotland, from small community events through conferences, regional events, to large scale cultural and sporting events. Reviewing and refreshing the strategy has been taken forward in an open and transparent way, informed by engagement and impact assessment processes throughout, including a public consultation. The drafting process has been led by Visit Scotland, with the refresh strategy endorsed by COSLA, trade unions and the event industry advisory group. It's been a really valuable process with clear consensus in terms of priority themes and the next steps across the event sector. The strategy will provide focus for the whole event sector, bringing everyone together to deliver that refreshed and shared ambition for Scotland. Implementing the refresh strategy will require continuation of that collaborative work across the public sector, private sector, local authorities, and of course, the third sector. We need to involve a wide range of voices and interests as we do. Everyone has a role and a part to play in that. And I will be listening very closely to that discussion today. So as I head towards the end of my closing remarks, um, I can't leave the stage uh, without 
uh, making my own tribute towards somebody very, very special uh, in the room. Um, and that is to Paul Bush. I've acknowledged that there will be a further challenge to the sector, which we've only heard about last week. And that is the fact that in going forward with this work, we heard last Tuesday that after 20 years with Event Scotland, Paul Bush has announced that he will be moving on in the summer. I know that for many here today, we'll be taking the opportunity to thank Paul in person for the astonishing contribution that he has made to the event sector through his work with Event Scotland and his tireless work with sporting associations. I'd like to publicly add to those thanks today and pass on the Scottish Government's gratitude to him for his personal contribution to ensuring that Scotland is a perfect skate stage. Thank you. I'll finish by stressing the event sector is a valued contributor to Scotland's well-being economy and that together we can maintain Scotland's reputation as a global leader in events and Scotland as the perfect stage. All of us here today recognise that we cannot afford complacency. We need to retain the portfolio's breadth and balance of events and locations. Without that balance, Scotland will not only lose the benefits of events regularly held across the country, we risk the infrastructure and expertise that enable Scotland to occupy our current position of global citizen, uh, global leadership and citizenship, actually. <laughs> the refreshed strategy's ambition is to maintain this position for Scotland's event sector so that we can continue to reap the benefits from now until 2035. We must continue to adapt, innovate and target resources towards the Scottish Government's mission of equality, opportunity and community. In this way, the event sector can continue to support the delivery of a fairer, greener and wealthier Scotland. Thank you for listening and I look forward to hearing from the discussions uh, around the panel and through my continued engagement with the industry. Thank you.